Epic Talk. Epic Talk. Epic Talk. Epic Talk. Stand up live. Do you know what, ladies and gentlemen, people out there in the business say that uh, I'm a bit of a legend, but I've got to tell you, uh, when I was a compere in this business, I was used to introduce this guy, and that was 30 odd years ago. I know he's been around for 35 years. You never see him on television. This is what's wrong with television. They don't show it. But please, welcome a very, very funny man indeed. The one and only Mr. Chubby Oates! Yeah. Oh, bless you. That's right. Chubby Oates. Uh, get a name straight. Saves you nudging each other and saying who's the fat bastard. <laughs> Puppy fat, that is. I've just hit a dog. Nothing wrong with being fat. At least we're not going to see three inches. I know there's another six behind it. <laughs> I'm an old comic. I ain't making a comeback. I ain't fucking been nowhere. But, I'm... <laughs> but you do travel about in this game. Last night, I was at the De Montford Hall, Leicester, which is rather smart. And tomorrow night, I'm at the Theatre Royal, Nottingham. So it's not just a pleasure to be here in Docklands tonight. It's fucking inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, now I come from London, I went mean, bloody right, and I, I enjoy London, nicest people in the world. I was in my local pub the other day, little pub I go in called the Disappointed Virgin. <laughs> oh no, the, the, the halfway in. And <laughs> it's funny how you lose your memory as you get older. My memory's going. I got home the other night and I crept into bed with the old woman and I put my arm round her and she said to me, you've had it, and do you know I couldn't remember? <laughs> I'm in the... <laughs> You've always got someone at the end of the bar picking their nose, haven't you? It's an amazing thing, that. Wherever pub you go, in, anywhere in the world, there's someone, end of the bar, reefing the hooter. And you have to look. You don't want to, but it's like a magnet. And you gaze over, you sort of go... <laughs> and your lips move. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched this fellow for 25 minutes picking his nose. In the end, I couldn't contain myself. I said, excuse me, I said, you ever thought that it might be up the other side? <laughs> <laughs> Geezer's come in a pub. He said, a pint of bitter, please. The governor said, we don't often see you in here. He said, no. He said, I'm 62 today. He said, I'll have a double whiskey on the house. Will we see you here tomorrow? He said, no, I'm two to ten. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be in work to understand that. And <laughs> Mind you, I don't sign on no more. I've got the hump with that. You know, when I go and sign on, I always get behind that bloke who's dripping in Artex and said he ain't worked for a month. <laughs> <laughs> I went to sign on the other week. They said to me, what was your last job? I said, ink monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've never worked, I have. I was in the army. I wasn't outside in the army. I went out with a posh girl in the army. She was posher than me, even. <laughs> Remember one night at Catrick, I got a bit amorous, because it's a romantic place, Catrick. And <laughs> as I'm walking along, like, with this bird through this field, I had a bit of a bob out, like, a bit of a grope, like, and she's very posh. She said, manners, manners, tits first. <laughs> 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 She said, you can't do that to me because I'm a whack. You know what that stands for? I said, no. She said, a walk and a cuddle. I said, oh, piss off, I'll wait for a whack. <laughs> <laughs> we had a walk and a fortnight in Felix, though. I, I get these problems. I mean, like, you know, it, it ain't worth getting old if you don't get problems. But, it, I mean, I, I, I'm on the train. I use the train a lot since I lost my driving licence. Well, I ain't lost it. I know where it is. Swansea. And <laughs> Funny people in the Welsh, aren't they? Taffy was taking his driving test. The fella said, can you make a U-turn? He said, no, but I can make it taste water. And... <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's one of them things. You're on a train, once you lose your brief, and like, like, there's only one of them punk rockers opposite me, and he's got the, like, the spiky hair, all the colours under the sun, and he's got all the tattoos on, and I've had a look at him. As you would, because you've got to gaze over. And I said, oh, yeah. And he looked at me, he said, oi, what's the matter with you, old chap? Again, old chap, me. <laughs> I said, well, just having a vada, just having a look like. He said, ain't you never done nothing outrageous in your life? 
ain't you ever made a statement? I said, yeah. I said, oh, I once fucked a parrot. <laughs> and I was just thinking, you might be my son. <laughs> I find all this trouble, and it's like, it, it, was, it, was, it was like it with a car. See, what, what I'd done, the night I got done for DD, it, it wasn't my fault, I was a bit flash. I'd just got this Reliant Robin. <laughs> Bloody good car, the Reliant Robin. I'd get behind a wheel of that like a dog fucking a football. <laughs> I'm driving home, like you do, driving home, and the amazing thing was, the, the bloody thing it jackknifed on the A12, it, it, <laughs> it's hit this fag packet, going right out of control. <laughs> and the old Bill's there when you don't want him. He said to me, he said, uh, are you the driver of this vehicle? And I said, yeah. <laughs> but I have to sit in the front, because it helps me get home quicker. <laughs> which is just what I'm going to do in a moment. I've got to get home. I've promised the wife to do her a favour. And, uh, and I'll see you later. Is that it? That's it. Yeah. <laughs>